Greetings and salutations, all you lovely individuals. We are back. It's Lee Dunlock. My name is Eric, and we got a little special fun epi today with the announcement that esports will be part of the Olympics starting as early as next year. We don't know the full titles, we don't know all the details, but it's of course the perfect time to revisit which countries would put together the best rosters when it comes specifically to League of Legends, of course. I know we've heard uh, some sayings that any violent first-person shooting games are against the beliefs and systems of the IOC, and I've even seen maybe League of Legends because it's fighting. People are killing each other in a fantasy world where there's giant crocodiles and giant buff businessmen. That's a dark so it's insane if uh, fantasy games like League of Legends, if there's zero violence at all, well, you're watching a Stardew Valley uh, speed run through, but assuming that League of Legends will be there, there's no shortage of amazing rosters that we could be putting together. We'll start with the big boys, the heavy hitters, the ones who would be buying for that gold medal, and of course, that is Team Korea and Team China. Uh, Korea... Obviously, roster a little dependent on current form, as would be the case whenever the Olympics are rolling around. But that's why, uh, also, to note, all these rosters, we're doing two players maximum per team, which you can't just slot Gen G in. So if you had to pick from them, it's Canyon and Chobi, that mid-jungle duo coming in. I would love to put Keen on this roster as well, but you're slotting in Zeus ahead of him and hoping he can find uh, that 2023 form returning to him. And then bot lane Viper over Ruler. Again, current form, you're talking about him. And then you pair him with his buddy Delight because you have that inherent bot lane synergy. But obviously, there's no shortage of incredible bot lanes that you could choose from. Ruler could come in. Gumayushi and Kyria could come in. Lahens could come in. There's so many bot laners. Uh, of that Korean status that you could be slotting in. And uh, in terms of other junglers, I know Kanavi's a guy you would maybe talk about uh, having Canyon over. I believe that's who they had for the Asian Games uh, where they ended up winning a gold medal. So only two players per team. And then let's assume you have a substitute. Obviously Faker is going to be the sub on this roster. Again, just like the Asian Games for the veteran leadership, the hype and status of just having him on the squad but that's a no-brainer but you have to have Chovy on the squad because he's the GOAT mid laner. Team China is a little trickier because there's a lot of guys you could choose from. Obviously some of the best players in the LPL are actually from South Korea but we got Ben in the top lane and Knight as your two BLG members. I'd want to put Jun maybe Wei as well in that jungle spot but you can't have three BLG guys so I'm taking a risk and bringing in the young gun milky way in that jungle with a star studded stacked roster would love to see what he's capable of doing but obviously if you're bringing in a unproven uh, player like that in the jungle you got to have a wily veteran substitute so that's where tien comes in as that sub jungle spot to be able to rotate between those two guys tian is obviously from top esports so if you're bringing mako again another veteran presence guy who's proven himself on the international stage in every possible tournament that's already two guys from tes which means we can't have elk we can't have jackie love who's the next best adc that you can bring it's gala over from lng uh Obviously, maybe there's a way you can finagle in 369 uh, over Ben, but basically you're trying to fit as many TES and as many BLG members as possible. Less JDG because, again, the two best players, Ruler and Kanavi, are from South Korea and vying for that spot uh, on that Korean roster. So definitely still no shortage of amazing squads and both Korea and China, I think we've alluded to before, a B team for both of these squads would probably be metal contenders and the best contenders uh, for the A-team of both Korea and China. So both of them uh, obviously would be the absolute forefront runners uh, for gold and silver at this hypothetical event. But hey, listen, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I think one of the other best rosters you're putting together is from Team Canada, the Great White North. I'm talking licorice in the top lane 
The one weak spot is Jungle, where you have Shaden, who's been killing it on FlyQuest Next. Obviously, he played some games uh, with EG. Other jungler, you're maybe talking about Tomio, who's getting benched from the Shopify Rebellion. So jungle is the one maybe weak spot. But then you're looking Jojo Pyun, Masu, Vulcan. The, the Team Canada one, legit, looks better than Team USA. And we'll get to the American one uh, in a minute. But in terms of subs for the Canadian one, you're even throwing in Sniper to maybe have a little finagle, extra sauce, solo kill capability with Licorice. Overall, it's kind of a younger roster. If you do start Sniper with Masu, with Shaden, then you've all of a sudden Jojo, Pion, and Vulcan are kind of your big old veterans. But Jojo and Vulcan are basically vying for best in their role in the LCS. Uh, you even throw in, as a head coach, you could bring in Dylan Falco over from G2. So Team Canada, no joke, could be one of the more favorites to, uh, at the very least, medal. Maybe get a bronze behind Korea and China, uh, but would be legitimate competitors if you can survive in that jungle spot, obviously. I'd love to bring Wild Turtle along, too, just to have a smiley Good old pal, and in case Moss, who's unable to step up. Truthfully, I feel like you'd probably get seven players. That's two subs, if this were the case. That makes more sense, uh, because there's so many guys that could play for a lot of these different countries. So I'd be bringing in Wild Turtle and Sniper as those substitutes. Alluded to Team USA, the United States, America. So often just bunched in NA just means... The U.S. to a lot of people, but I'm talking, let's go bot to top, because Busio, absolutely, if you did this a year or two ago, this roster would be looking a little bit suspect, but since both Busio, Yon, and APA have all leveled up over the last year, all of a sudden, you're feeling very good about the two Team Liquid studs coming over, slot in Blabber is the easy choice in that jungle spot, top lane is the slightly dicey one uh, for the U.S. Dokla has not been in good form lately, so I'm bringing in Surti, the solo queue god, uh, who's been absolutely terrorizing again for the FlyQuest Challenger team. I'd probably be starting him over somebody like Dokla, and then you got a pretty solid looking roster. APA as Yapton America himself is it obviously an absolute no-brainer. Maybe, now that I'm looking at this roster kind of a second time, You'd be hard cut. It'd be a tough battle between them and Canada for maybe uh, vying for one of these uh, bronze medals behind China and Korea. But either way, you'd have the great rivalry. APA chirping against JoJo. Blabber against his boys in JoJo and Vulcan. Uh, no shortage of fun matchups. And again, they'd be legit contenders on that big stage. Obviously, vying again for that bronze are guys who... Two countries who have been at the forefront of the scene for a long time, and that is both Taiwan and Vietnam. These ones were tricky to put together because you just want to fill them for the PCS or for Taiwan. You want to fill it with PSG talent, but you can only have two. So the obvious two to choose are Jinjia and Maple, probably the two most important members of that squad. And Jinjia has just been picking up. MVPs over in the PCS and Maple, of course, such an accomplished, iconic career in that mid lane. So then when you have to start filling out the other side of things, you want to bring Sword Art as that veteran and has had a bit of resurgence on the Flying Oysters. You probably also want to bring Karsa as a sub for the similar reason and obviously the inherent synergy between them. I mean, Maple, Sword Art, obviously they go way back. So then you're kind of capped out on PSG and you're capped out on the Flying Oysters, kind of the two best teams uh, coming out of the Taiwan scene. So you can't have Betty, you can't have Shun. So you bring in Wacko, who's a Wacko. You remember a couple, uh, I think it was last year's MSI or last year's Worlds. This guy was playing absolutely out of his mind in the bot lane and with a stacked PCS roster, he could definitely make some noise. Top lane is where it's tricky because, you know, Guys like Rest, guys like Aji, you can't really bring them, so we're going Wen Jiang, who is a little less proven and might be a liability internationally, but these these be the rules. But either way, Taiwan, of course, would be an absolute force, and of course, Vietnam would also be an absolute force. But again, if you slot in Kiyaya and Levi, that's two GAM members already, uh, you're bringing in Kati, who of course used to be on GAM, but has since moved on, and 
Guys like Style, Buyer Options, but Shogun and Taki are probably uh, the best bot line you could put together that's apart from Gam. And let's be honest, there's been so many substitutions and different things going on in the VCS lately that there isn't a bot lane that you're as terrified of in years past. And obviously the big bonus is you'd have S of M as a coach coming in for the Vietnamese team. Because these countries have been putting together five starting players uh, domestically for years now, they probably have a slight advantage, but the Canada and USA teams have played together. You know, they've been in the LCS playing against each other for years and years. So those four squads have got to be kind of the main ones that you're slotting in that next tier to be competing uh, for a medal against Korea, against China, because there's some pretty pretty solid looking rosters there. But then you get into the whole EU side of things. And there's a lot of heavy hitters that you could put together uh, in terms of European squads. First and foremost, let's start with Team Spain. This is a this is a spicy one because it looks so good. Oscar Rinnan, Razork, already got that built-in Fnatic synergy. You've got Flacid and maybe Alvaro. There's a guy like Supa you could throw in there. But the problem for Spain is the mid lane. There's no real high caliber mid laner that you could be putting in, which is why I would legitimately, if I was Spain putting together these hypothetical rosters, I'd be bringing both El Yoya and Razork, and one of you are playing some mid lane champions. It's AP jungler meta. It's Kiana going historically for El Yoya. And of course, if you're bringing El Yoya, Alvaro, that's two Mad Lions Koi members. So Flacken kind of has to come in as the AD carry at that point. But Obviously, a roll swap mid lane is not ideal, but the other four members are so strong uh, for Spain, and El Yoya or Razark would probably both have fun cooking in that mid lane. Combine this with, you got Mithy as a coach to come in, and you've got management influencers like Ibe and Xpeke that you know would be involved in this squad, and Spain, the infrastructure, everything but a mid laner, Looks pretty good for a Spanish uh, battalion to compete on that Olympic stage. And there's obviously, you know, direct rivals, France. France could put together a pretty solid roster as well. And much like Bad Lions Koi are mostly uh, Spanish players. Team BDS, mostly French players. But if you can only bring two, you're probably going Adam and Sheo. I know Nuke is a guy who you could bring along as well, but when you do have an alternate option in Viteo, even though he's been on a bit of a downward trend the last little while, but you pair Adam and Cheo together while you can. Viteo comes in, Han Sama in an AD carry, and maybe you're saying the weakest point is Zoelis, but or Zoelis, but he's playing with an absolutely stacked roster here. Then you're not sweating that so much because uh, he's working with so much more than he's had to work with on Rogue. So. France, absolutely at the forefront in terms of one of the best EU squads that you could probably put together because you've got championship contender in like three of these five roles. Obviously, Han Sama is one of the best 80 carries you can get in all of the EU. So massive blessing to be able to have him on a squad like France. Would love to see that matchup against Spain. What other big hitters? What other power hitters are there in EU to talk about? Of course, Denmark is one. Now, Denmark, if you were doing this a few years ago, would be even more stacked. But truthfully, when at the height of Danish League of Legends players, a lot of those guys have now since retired. Yes, we're talking Bjergsen, Sven Skaren, Santorin. Okay, these are all great guys that could come in on the coaching staff. Maybe emergency subs to come in the jungle spot. And the jungle spot is the weakest and most sus for the Danish teams because you have Tinks, who's been playing in some ERLs. You have Broxa, who is retired from pro play, but still playing at a high solo queue level. Either way, maybe Broxa trains and can come back. Maybe Tinks gets the level up to go, but that is the one that you're left scratching your head because the other roles are all looking pretty good. Even Wonder in his later twilight year careers coming in the top lane you're excited about. And really, all that matters is you have Caps on the roster. The Western GOAT, hands down. He's enough to drag four irrelevant players maybe to the podium uh, at an Olympic event like this. But you also have Zven 
even Doss. Doss is a little sus, but Caps and Sven as your pillars for this squad, and absolutely Denmark could be potential uh, medal, medal contenders, at least a top five squad at some of these international events. But yeah, I mean, when Bjergsen was at his peak, when Sven Skaren was at his peak, Santorin, sure, you'd be throwing him in. And then how can I forget the substitute? Jensen comes in. Maybe he pops into the jungle if they need it. We know he, there was rumored he might play AD carry, but Jensen coming in. He's got the built-in synergy with Sven from Dignitas, and Denmark feeling pretty good, even if some of those junglers would be looking a little bit sus. The list keeps going for pretty dang good teams in EU. How about we roll over to Sweden to see what's going on with the Swedish superstars. We're talking Finn in the top lane. Yes, okay. Larsen with the built-in synergy from Rogue in the mid lane. Yes, I know Larsen gets a lot of flack, but... Still a fantastic option when it comes to an international event like this. I spent some time looking around for Sweden junglers. And I was going, oh man, it's getting a little bit dicey. And then I forgot, your boy Yike is Swedish. All of a sudden, the Sweden roster is looking pretty dang good when you can throw in a former rookie of the year, one of the best premier junglers in the LEC. Reckless in at support. You don't need him at AD carry. Unforgiven, who maybe we've forgotten a little bit about, but... He's been smurfing in the TLC over in the Turkish League. He had some good moments when he was in the LCS and short stints in the LEC. So starting five, Sweden actually going right near the top of power rankings when you're putting together European squads. And then you slot in, you could bring in a guy like Yamato Cannon as head coach for the inspiring motivational speeches on the international stage, which is absolutely what you want. And... Feeling real good about Sweden. It's got a nice mix of veterans, guy like Reckless, even Larson, who's been around for a long time, and some younger talent uh, like Yike. And, I mean, Unforgiven's been around for a few years now, but still somewhat unproven in those regards. So I, I might like Sweden over a squad like Denmark, if I'm being honest. Uh, and it keeps rolling. Countries continue to pour out solid rosters in EU. Let's go Germany, where you can have a potentially two-headed beast in the top lane. We're talking about Irrelevant, who is the most relevant member of SK Gaming. And you can also have Broken Blade coming in as a sub. Uh, either way, I mean, that's two lethal combos to have when you're talking about uh, German top laners. Uh, Jungle, a little bit more shaky because I know everyone always drops in Gilius on this one, but guys, Gilius hasn't played in years. Lorox hasn't played in the LEC in a while, but he's been he's been churning it up in uh, the ERLs, the second tier of the EU. So maybe it's a guy you could bring in. Same goes for Power of Evil. He's been smurfing a little bit in some of the German leagues, uh, tier two. Even Abadage is on uh, the... B tier team and thought might he he might be getting more starts for Excel. So you you have options in the mid lane, either POE or Abadage, and then the bot lane is where you're playing through a lot of the time when you have upset and even Kaiser. I know this pairing didn't really work out on Vitality, but uh, upset has had obviously a resurgence on Carmine Corp. So your playthrough top side and bot with upset as a hyper carry and Germany could definitely make some noise at this event and surprise some people if somebody like Lorox was able to you know step up a little bit to the rest of the competition the rest of the boys on the squad but it'd be good vibes central when you have broken blade on the roster uh last big EU one that you could talk about is Poland a little bit of a surprise and there would be some suspect uh, play going on. This might be a very toxic team when you have a guy like inspired in that jungle spot. Obviously, you also have Jankos as a Polish king who, it doesn't matter who the sub is, you're bringing both inspired and Jankos. They're too good not to and obviously both have such incredible game knowledge and would without a doubt be the impromptu leaders of this squad. But you also have a guy like Trimby and the game knowledge and just how to go about running a team, those are three of the best guys you could possibly imagine having. Problem is, outside of that, it starts getting a little bit shaky. Agressivo comes in the top lane. Okay, that's pretty solid. He's still a guy who you feel like hasn't fully gotten that LEC opportunity to showcase what he's capable of. Zwiru in the mid lane or Frescawi. 
both guys that have had decent highs and kind of low lows where you haven't been too excited about them. So either one comes with its pros and cons. And then you're still slotting in Woolite. I feel like we've done these hypothetical world rosters over so many years and Woolite's always the Polish one we're throwing in. He's not even retired yet, guys. He's still playing. It's been a long time since we've seen him in a tier one league, but he continues to do his thing, rack up pentakills in a lot of these tier two squads and still a good option. It's not like he's an amateur player coming in. So Poland themselves could even uh, be competing uh, with that. But there's even, you know, there's other other countries, you can maybe have a couple of players, but it's hard to flesh out a full five-man roster. You know, uh, Croatia, you've got Perks you could throw in. Czech Republic, you've got Humanoid coming in with a little sprinkle of Karzy. But getting five full members, it's getting a little dicey. Even, even you know, the OPL, you can have Fudge throwing in. You can have FBI going in. Rioma, shout out, a Rioma reunion. For an OPL squad, but uh, again, five guys, a full five-man roster is hard to get for a lot of these countries, but there's a lot of teams that could sneak in and maybe go for that bronze medal. Even remember at the Asian Games, China barely came away with bronze after they lost to Korea in the semifinals, but it was even dicey for them uh, in that third place match, so you never know what could happen on these entirely different international stages and international in a different way than Worlds or MSI because it wouldn't be a riot run event. It would just be completely different. The resources that are being invested from these countries and there would definitely be potentials for upset. But honestly, like eight or nine of these teams you feel like could be legit metal contenders. So I truly hope this is something that ends up coming true in whatever fashion it ends up being. I feel like it's something that Gleek fans have been dreaming about for a very long time and it feels like we're one step closer and oh so close to seeing this actually happen in some form of Olympic event. But that is it today for League Unlock. My name is Eric and thank you to all you beautiful people for hanging out as always. You know we'll catch you on that flippity flip.